Hello everyone, thank you for checking out today's video. In this one, we're going to be covering the Employee Center and Service Portals on ServiceNow. All right, so as always, we will start with ServiceNow's documentation and then we'll jump into our video or our demo. So ServiceNow describes the Employee Center as being able to provide employees with a unified process, a unified portal to access services, communications, apps, and tasks, boost productivity, enhance self-service, and reduce costs. These are some of the benefits of the Employee Center. Here are some screenshots. And I was actually at Knowledge ServiceNow's conference in Las Vegas earlier this year, and they were showing some of the different employee centers that different companies are using, like Paramount. Um, who else was there? Uh, Paramount was the one that stood out to me. Uh, they had a beautiful employee center. I mean, it was really, really nice. There was a lot of customizations in place, but it didn't even look anything like this. But it was um, very robust and a powerful employee center that offered essentially everything that their employees needed just right there on the employee center. That's where they did their onboarding. That's where you host all your catalog items for employees to access knowledge articles. I mean, everything can live on this employee center. And then if you set it up correctly, it should be very straightforward and intuitive for, um, like we said here, easy to use and intuitive. It should be very intuitive for your, um, customers slash other users on your instance to be able to utilize. And you can customize it as needed. So you can see like this featured featured section at the top. You can change what you have featured at the top. Um, looks like right here, they have a list of tasks. So this is where I said that the onboarding comes into play. So when you onboard a new employee, you can have a series of tasks that kick off to that employee that gets assigned to them. So different things they need to do to complete their onboarding. That can all be set up through the employee center. You can see it's also integrated with Microsoft Office 365. And there's also this feature called Manager Hub which uh, allows you to manage your teams and ensure everyone is being as productive as possible. And as always, I will put a link to this documentation in the description. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering, how do I edit this employee center? How do I change the colors and um, the logos and all that good stuff? So if you come over to all and you type in portal, you're gonna have a bunch of different options here. So the one that you're gonna wanna go to to make those changes, if you go to service portal configuration, from here, you can change the branding. Um, I'll, I'll actually cover each one of these. So the branding editor, so customize your portal's title, title, logo, and theme colors. So if that's what you're wanting to do, you're gonna wanna do that under branding editor. Designer, so you can create and layout pages with drag and drop functionality, preview pages as you make changes, configure the properties of a pages, pages, containers, and widgets from a map view. Um, the widget editor, that does require some coding. So that's gonna be messing with the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you can create a new portal if you want to. And then there's also some guides. So let's go ahead and start with the branding editor. Okay, so when you click on this, it's gonna initially load your service portal, but let's say you want to change your employee center. You would just come up here in the top left and search employee center. And then from there, this is kind of what we were looking at on our um, documentation here. And if you want to get to the employee center, all you have to do after the backslash, so uh, after your instance URL where it goes .com forward slash, just add the letters ESC, Echo Sierra Charlie. And then if you hit enter, it should take you to the employee center on your instance, whether that's your PDI or your work instance. Okay, so from here, we actually, we need to change our scope. So let's go back and change our scope. So we'll do center core. Okay, from here, well, let's reload the page, see if it gives us the option to make those changes. And now it does. Okay, great. So the portal title, so we can change that if we want to. So the title, yeah, that's in your browser tab. So when you look at your browser tab, whether that's Chrome or whatever, and it says, um, for me, it says branding editor, but if you're on your employee center, this will be that title that shows up there. So we'll put YouTube Employee Center, um, your logo. So if you want to change your logo right here, you can. You can also add additional padding. So if you'd want it to appear farther from the left, um, you can change those margins. And our tagline color. So this looks like it's the top color up here, right? So let's see if we change that, see what happens. Uh, what's this changing here? I'm not sure what the tagline color is. 
Let's go ahead and move over to theme colors and then we'll have a better idea of what we're looking at. Okay, so nav bar color. So this is the top black section up here. Let's say we wanted that section to be a dark blue. Look at that. That's kind of a, I don't really like it. Let's, let's change it up a little bit, maybe more of a purple. Okay, that looks okay. And our subheader, our nav bar divider, I think that looks okay. I don't mind the colors. Nav bar link color. So white is still gonna, well, this is kind of like a grayish color, but if we wanted to, we could change this color right here. Nav bar link hover. So if we're hover on it, that's the color it becomes. So it goes from gray to white. Oops, gray to white. Same thing over here. See these colors are initially gray, but if we hover on it, it changes to white. Page background. So right now it's kind of like an off-white eggshell color, but we could change that if we needed to. I think this looks pretty good though. It's easy to see everything. Button default background. So you can see right here, this is the default button. You can change the background to that. Primary button, success button, info button. I mean, these are, it's pretty straightforward what you're doing here. So if you like every, the way everything looks, it should save automatically. Uh, yeah, because I don't think there's any sort of save option on here. And like I said, you could change the logo if you want to. But if everything looks good, what we can do now is let's go over to our employee center. And you can see our new colors are now reflected. Looking snazzy. Okay, let's go back over here to our other editing options. So let's go to designer. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. While that's loading, I'm gonna go somewhere else. Okay, there we go. Employee Center homepage. So this is where you need to search the name of the page. So these are the different pages that are on the Employee Center. So let's click on this. And this is where we can actually adjust what we want on the page. So maybe we wanted another aside section over here. Um, we can do that. And these are the different widgets that you can add. So as you scroll through this, maybe you'll find something that interests you. So you've seen you could put like knowledge articles there. My team. I don't even know what that is. Let's see what that does. Let's add a my team section. Oh, did it get added? This page is in the SNX yet, but the police and our current and your current. Um, what, what is it saying? Is it saying that particular widget or is it saying the page that we're in right now? We need to change our scope. Hold on a minute, a minute. let's try one more thing. Let's see if we can add approvals. S-N-E-X underscore S-P application. But employee center core is your corner. Um, okay. I don't even see that one on here. Uh... Hmm. I'm not sure what's going on here. Service portal application. I don't know which one that is. Is there a service portal? Virtual agent service portal widgets. Let's go back to global, see what happens. Let's try this again. Let's try to add approvals. SNEXSP application, but global is your current. I hate that it's given the internal name. <laughs> Which application is this?
Okay, so let's do sys underscore scoop. All right, guys, we're going to do some troubleshooting on the fly. Which one is it? SN. Let me do that one more time so I can get the name. Oh, SN underscore EX. Let's see if that comes up. Oh, just regular employee center. Why didn't you just say that? Why you got to give me the internal name? All right, now we're good. Or should be good at least. Let's scroll all the way down here. Da -da -da. Tickets. Flush bucket. What was the one that we were initially looking at? What was that? Oh, my team. That's right. Okay, so let's see if we can add my team. Okay. Nice. So we got a team section added. I don't know what it does. Maybe it's who's a part of your groups. I'm guessing that's what that is. No, oh, trying to click edit. It's not doing anything. But you guys get the gist. So you would just find... Oh, I think my page is frozen. Oh, okay, I think that's what we were doing initially. All right, and then if you click on the portal cogwheel up there, these are some of the different, again, it's just making me go back and forth with these scopes, my goodness. But this is the portal settings page, which we're gonna go to in a moment. But in case you wanted to change like your main menu, your theme, things like that, um, this is the shortcut page to get to that. Okay, so like I said, you guys could add different widgets on here. You could adjust the order of these widgets. You can make customizations to these widgets. So if you click on one of these, like the, what is this one? Just the quick links. Let's see what it does. So quick links, we could change. Yep, so you see right here, it gives you like password reset, system status, request standing desk. So you could put different catalog items or knowledge articles here, I'm guessing. You can also change the color. So gives you a lot of customization tools here at your disposal. Okay, now let's go back over to this page that I was trying to get to before. So let's go to portals. So if you type in portals and click on this, these are all the different portals that you have on your instance. So for us, let's go ahead and click on the Employee Center portal. So we renamed it to YouTube Employee Center, so it's not called just Employee Center anymore. And then it has the green because that's, uh, I'm guessing that's the one that ServiceNow wants you to use. But these are some of the other portals that you have. And you can also create custom portals too, as needed. But you shouldn't have to if you use Employee Center correctly. Okay, this is an Employee Center core. So let's switch this to Employee Center core. Okay, so this is just saying that. Um, if you make changes to um, higher risk files, that means that oftentimes um, these things are getting updated throughout releases and patches. And if that happens where you have customizations to this page and they try to put out an upgrade or changes to this page, you're going to have to review those changes. And then you're going to have to decide if you want to accept them or revert to base, which is kind of what we're seeing here. This is the base. So you either revert to base, you can accept some of the pages, or you can just keep what you have already. But if you make changes, then every time an update that comes out to like this page, for example, um, you're going to get those skip changes for your upgrades that you're going to need to review. So you might be making more work for yourself. So like with my work instance, um, not the DC release, but the Vancouver release, I had like 400 something changes I had to review. It was obnoxious. So you have to go through each one of those changes and see what it is and see if you want to accept it or if you want to skip it or um, retain what you have or maybe accept some of the changes. So it's it's a whole thing. So just keep in mind, if you make those changes out of the box, you're going to potentially make more work for yourself down the line. And also reiterate that to your customers too, because oftentimes they're going to like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. You know, do, do they really need those changes? You know, you can explain to them that this is going to create a lot more work for us in the end. And um, 
if someone isn't there checking those skip changes, you could be missing out on updates to the employee center in the future. Okie doke. So let's go over here to the main menu option. And from here, we can see some of our menu options at the top. So we have like more and get support. So let me bring up our employee center again. We can reference what we're seeing. Yep, so we have support right here. So if we click on that, you know, it gives you the request password reset and contact us option. And then the more I'm guess we're not using the more. We just have the topics over here though, for the technology services. Okay. And you can see over here too, some other options like more items, enable tasks, enable requests, wish list. So those are things too that will be appearing over here. Actually, no, I think that's a separate section. I think this is actually part of the widget. You'd actually have to edit this from the widget, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's go back. And let's explore some of these other, some of these other ones I haven't looked at in a while, so we'll look at them together. Your 404 page, so in case someone goes to a page that has an error, it's where you send them. Your theme. Your CSS variables, so you can make changes here or you can do it from the branding editor. And this is the taxonomy that I talked about. So these are the different topics. So you see within technology services, that's why we see right here, technology services. And then if we click on that, you can see it further broken down, or at least we should. Yep, child topics, hardware, software, network, privacy, IT, blah, blah, blah. So it, Definitely takes a village to create your taxonomy. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot going on there, especially if you have like hundreds of catalog items and hundreds of knowledge articles, and it's gonna, it's gonna take a, a hot second for you guys to get that figured out. Okay. And what do we got over here? We have our theme. So same thing. This looks like this is just part of what we would normally edit in our branding editor. And this one, yeah, you see it's kind of showing the page contents for the homepage. So again, you can make those changes on the page editor if you wanted to. Remember we just added my team. So you see that showing up here now. Okay, guys, that pretty much covers it. I mean, the rest of you guys kind of have to explore on your own. I mean, we can go, th go through this for hours, covering all the different things that you can edit, but hopefully that gives you guys a good start. So, you know, you can change the colors, the logo, the different widgets that are on the page, um, the taxonomy. You can make sure that the taxonomy is reflecting a uh, correct hierarchy of topics. Within those topics, you have your different categories. Within those categories, you have your different catalog items and knowledge articles and things like that so that everything is very easy for your users to find. All right, everyone, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. Catch you all in the next one very soon.